Praise the Lord, everyone. It is church time. A little bit past. We come to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says that it's his gates with thanksgiving and enters courts with praise. Hallelujah. We need to have thanksgiving on our lips and, and praise in our hearts. We need to lift God up. Hallelujah. Get our mind up. Everything else, hallelujah. Let's get our minds out of God and see what God will do for this for me. Praise God. I know we get Brother Grady up here sometimes, but he's not just Brother Grady, he's the man of God tonight. Or this morning. Hallelujah. Brother Gussie, let's go to Tennessee, can't get it right, whether it's daytime or night. But this part is very good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. And ask God to have his way in the service. Be sensitive to his voice. Hallelujah. We don't tell him what God will do. We'll just let him. Praise God. Is there any prayer requests, special requests? Who was it? Floyd Rose. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. I know Sarah's still recovering from that procedure they've done on her. She's supposed to go back. We need to keep her. Friday, she's going back and keep her in our prayers. Uh, any other requests, Sister Felicia? I still remember Nanny. She's getting feebler and feebler in her legs. Okay. Mommy shut. Okay. Thank God. He's supposed to be getting baptized this morning, I think, so we're in. Praise God. So, hey, God's doing some things. He's touching some hearts. Hallelujah. Thank God. So let's pray. Let's ask God to be with us in this service. Lord, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, you are great. Great to be praised. I love you, Jesus. I appreciate you. Lord, I'm asking you to minister to Sarah this morning. Lord, I'm asking you to give her deliverance and your seat that she just had. Lord, he was on this Thursday and Friday. Lord, I ask you to minister to Bobby Stanley and his family. Lord, I ask you to minister to Bobby Shutts and Felicia's grandfather. Lord, you minister to these needs. There's so many others, Lord, people right here in this house this morning that have needs, Lord. And I'm asking you to please touch our bodies, Lord, our hearts, our minds, Lord. Help us to be sensitive to your voice, Lord. We let the Spirit in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you, Jesus. You are great, Lord. It's great to be praised. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let your Spirit come down.
first, and then we take it off.
I want to get just a little talk with Jesus. Make it right. There's so many people in this world that don't know God. Oh, yeah. They, they go into problems and have trials and tribulations. And they don't know which way to turn to hurt someone. <laughs> committed suicide the other day. Hallelujah. Man, if they just know what we know here today, hallelujah, God can turn those situations That's around. Right, yeah. Lord, we need to get out there and tell them, praise God, we need to have souls filled with the Holy That's Ghost, right. hallelujah, right. praise God. I'm praying, Lord, we got this little box up here, we're praying for their names, yeah. hallelujah, every Monday we have a prayer meeting at 7 o'clock, I like to pick up that box, ask God to touch each and every one of them, whether it's a healing, whether it's soul saving. Or both, hallelujah. I want to see God move. Yeah. And he talked about Ethan this morning. Yeah. He's kind of talking about the coming of him. I'm praying for him, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Ethan, Ethan's really a good guy. I'd like to see God get a hold of his heart. Yeah. I see him sometimes. He comes to a get together. You know, he'll, he'll, he'll get up here and he'll just kind of get together, playing some music, and we'll have a fellowship. And, you know, but man, he needs to go back to church. That's right. That's right. Yeah. He needs to go back to church. Yeah. 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 Kids, wife, hallelujah, praise God. And I'm still praying to that end. That's right. Yeah. I ain't yeah. giving up, brother. Yeah. Not right. Right. Praise God. I'm not up. I want to see Brother Don's children. I tried yeah. to get a hold of all of them this morning. Uh, I think I tried to text Darla. Come find out I was texting the landline, so it didn't go through. So I got Sister Sarah to try to get a hold of them. Yeah. I had their number. Amen. I want to see them come to church. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I'm not just wanting to see numbers. You know, I pray, Lord, that if we can help them, send them here, Lord. And if, if we can't help them, Lord, send them where they can be helped. You know, I've seen situations. I have cousins and relatives, and I guess I'm just rambling on. But, you know, I got a call one day from my mom. She told me about one of my cousins in Florida, Donna Couture. She had gotten married. She had a couple of kids. And she got working with some girl that was UPC. Kept talking to her and had Bible study with her. Got her to come to church. She repented of her sins. Got yes. baptized in Jesus' name. Filled with the Holy yes. Ghost. Amen. And the aunt's uncle said, what you need to do is talk to your cousin Ray. Uh -huh. Talk about doing the heart good, brother. Yes, brother. Yeah. 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 She wound up getting leukemia and dying. But man, how merciful is God? Right. Just right. before it's eternally too late. Oh, yeah. I pray, Lord, don't don't let people wait too long. That's right. Don't let us wait too long, Lord. Hallelujah. We need you. Praise God, Lord. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you. Feel after the Lord. Yes, amen. I still got a feeling God wants to do something. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sister Monica, you got a song this morning? Hallelujah. Lord. Lord, have your way. Touch our hearts and our minds. Jesus, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let's stand in church. Hallelujah. Let's all stand to our feet. Let's worship God. Lord,
You know, church is the best thing of our life. I'm telling you, God is so good to us today. Thank you. Give honor to Brother and Sister Seymour. Love these folks. Good friends, all the people here today. I've only preached this sermon twice. God dealt with me about this quite a while. And today's the third time I'm going to preach it. Matthew 8 and 23. And when he entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. Yo, know, there rose a great tempest of the sea. Insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. His disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. He said to them, Why are you fearful, O you little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What manner of man is this? That even the winds and the sea obey him. Every bow, Pastor, would you pray? Let's give the Lord a hand. You may say this. We still take the same honor to hear this church. And we're praying that her husband's going to be in here too. So is Tammy now and all the rest of everybody else too. I want to tell a sermon tonight, I mean this morning, just for a little bit. Ride out your storm. Ride out your storm. Jesus, our help for today, our hope for tomorrow. If we can't hope for him, who can we hope for? Jim, we tell you something about this today. You know, Brother Steve Wilson was my pastor for over 20 years. And he, stole, he said something one time so true. When you're driving down the road, now bear with me for a moment. You're driving down the road and you're in the worst storm that you've ever been in driving a car. You ever been in them? I've been in them. Uh -huh. Try to rig cars. But you know what he said? He said, if you stop, you will never get through the storm. Keep on driving, you're going to eventually get out of the storm. I want to tell you a little something about this uh, about this situation today. These guys decided, all of them followed Jesus right up in there in that little old boat. Now, they didn't have a boat, they had a caterpillar engine, by the way. Sailboat, in other words, what it was back in those days. Bear with me for just a moment. They walked up in that boat there, and Jesus just went right over there, and he laid down Sister Monica and just took him in there. Then all of a sudden, the wind, the waves began to come up over that boat. It began to rock back and forth. I'm going to tell you something. I don't like boats no more. And some folks go on cruising. If they like it, that's fine. But I, you might get me on a plane, but you won't get me on no boat. But these waves began to come up. And all of a sudden, that little old boat began to turn all the way around. And then different things. As a matter of fact, they got scared. They went over where it was, Brother Jeremy. And they woke him up. Hey, Jesus, I need you. You know, we, we need Jesus' help today. That's for sure. But you know one thing about this story was? He went out and he rose, he rebuked the sea, uh, the seas, the wind, everything. Just, and these guys said, what kind of man is it? I can tell you what kind of man is His name is Jesus today. Come on. Let me tell you a little something about this strange today. You know what? Some people are getting in a boat, and you stand there. Do you know, have you ever read the thing about a booth that killed Abraham Lincoln? Maybe you ought to read it sometime in a paper or library. You know he was trying to get away to West Virginia over there, and he decided... They go on across the river, Brother Jimmy. Better when you put going across the river in the nighttime, they got so turned around, Brother Guthrie, they woke up the next morning and went back to the same side where they started from. Uh -huh. You know what I'm telling you today? Sometimes we need God to show us what we need to really do. Right. But you know one thing about this straight today? You can be in a boat and you can be turned right. Can you imagine a bear with me for a moment? Sister so Trace said, Oh Lord, he might eat it. <laughs> You know what? You can be in a little boat in the middle of an ocean or river. And you get out there in the middle of the night, you don't have no compass. You know which way you're even going. You lose it when the, ne uh, the next morning comes. All of a sudden you begin to look around and you're going back the same way. You know what? That's what a lot of people do in life. They just go around and around. 
They go along for the road, the same problems, the same trouble, the same trials, going around and around, day after day, week after week, month after month. I'm here to tell you, there's a better way to get out of this. They begin to call on Jesus, and all of a sudden, the winds and the sea just stop like this. And I, I want to tell you a little secret about it. I'm going to preach to you just a little bit, I promise you. But you listen to me today. Do you know one thing? In 1912, April the 12th, the Titanic began its voyage from going from uh, England to New York. Well, about, in other words, the people was, was about uh, over 2,000 people was on the boat, and they was going back to New York. And you know one thing about it? Over 1,500 people died. But there's a story that a lot of folks don't even know. Now, bear with me. There's a lot of story here that don't nobody really know. Do you know they said the guy, Brother Jeremy, the engineer, of this, uh, building this ship, he said, you know what he told somebody? He said, this ship will never sink. He said, God can't even sink the ship itself. Right? So when they got on that thing in England going all the way, and three days later they had an iceberg and 1,500 people died. You know what I'm saying to you today? That guy said, everybody's on that boat to God. But listen to me real closely. There's a story here that don't nobody know. You can get it at the library and you can find it out. There's a story there. There was a woman that was on that Titanic and she was a multi-time millionaire. Her mom and dad left her all kind of money and all she did, she had a big old castle system on her. She had all kind of money. She had waiters. She had butlers. She had cooks. Uh, people do her hair, do her nails. She sat back, and every time she'd get an invitation to go out to a big party, she'd jump on a train or turn around and get on a boat, go wherever. This time, she's going back home over there to New York. Bear with me for a moment. All of a sudden, she would go off and meet with the senators, with the governors, well, uh, anybody, the governor, the president, and go to them big parties. When you sit down there and just, they would drink the night. Uh, they'd have champagne, brandy, whiskey. Uh, she'd go off for the man for the night. Just ain't going to tell you. You know, that ain't life at all, is it? That's not that. Bear with me for a moment. You know one thing about it? All of a sudden, when they hit that iceberg, all of a sudden there was a missionary on there. They had some lifeboats on it, and the people got on the lifeboats and began to go down through there. All of a sudden, this woman, hey, I'm a millionaire. I got all kind of money, brother Kevin. I'd do whatever I want to do. But all of a sudden I said, ma'am, there's no room for you. There's no help for you here. But all of a sudden that missionary said, hey, I got a barrel over here that I hit. It's the empty beer barrel. He said, I'm going to get, was going to get in it. It'd be my way, Brother Jeremy, out of it. Out of the storm, in other words, to die. But that girl said, that woman said, I don't want to die. He said, you're not a Christian. She said, no, I'm not. She began to tell the things. He let that old barrel down and bear it with me into the ocean and began to rock back and forth. He helped her get out there in that barrel. But you listen to me real close. Now the others was going on in the other boats. They knew some kind of way that wire and water to get contact, people come go. This girl was put in this barrel, and all of a sudden, Sister Monica, she was in the barrel away from, from everybody. She's out there. Can you imagine being in a barrel for two or three days or a week? No food, no water, no nothing. All the money in the world she had was not going to save her. That's right. All the money that she had, all the senators, all the governors, all the president, all the folks she had, but nobody going to do it. Oh, she was out there in that barrel boat Germany by herself. Right. No food, no water, no nothing. All of a sudden, she said, maybe I ought to try praying. She got out on her hands and, you know, prayer still works too. All of a sudden, she got out on her hands and knees. She began to cry and pray and seek God. No food, no water. Couldn't see a boat. She's in the middle of the ocean by herself. And the Atlantic Ocean, all of a sudden, she got out on her knees. And Brother Jeremy, come right here now. She got out on her hands. Can you imagine that barrel, 55-gallon barrel, and she was in it? All of a sudden, she got out on her get on knees. She began to pray. She began to cry and talk to God. All the millions of dollars, all the butlers, all the cooks, all of everybody could not be there to help her. Only one person, only one could bring her out of her dilemma tonight. And you know
know who that was? That was Jesus. She began to cry and pray and seek the Lord. And she got a hold of it. And in a day or so, there come a big old boat by and just reached down and picked her up. Do you know what she did? She turned around. She went, I'm going to get with you now. She got it out this and she went back to her home. She told the cooks, she said, all right, go back in there and get all the wine we got, all the brandy, all the champagne, all the things we got, thank you, brother, and throw it, throw it out the wall, out the door. Get rid of that. And she turned around and she began to talk. She said, I won't need them high dollar clothes anymore. I won't be going out with them mayor and them government staying all night with them anymore. I said, what are you going to do? She said, I want you to get rid of everything. She went out through there and all of a sudden, she began to pray and kept on and she said, I won't need nobody cutting my hair no more. I won't need that makeup no more. I don't need the other things that they do. She said, I, I said, all the parties in the taste of go all the way. We don't need no more Brother Rose. She said, I'm going to change partners. She went and had all kind of new clothes made, and she kept not on going. But she changed partners. She changed partners. You know what she did? She became a missionary. She began going out for a little vision, telling them about God. Uh, what they need to do to obey the Lord. And they couldn't believe what she done. She went out there, had her clothes made, and went off. Uh, and she died being a missionary. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will bring you to your knees to get your attention. Right out your storm. You know what she did? She got back and she got it all together off. What are you saying, Brother Ray? I'm going to tell you what I'm saying this morning. You ride in the storm long enough. The storm will overtake you. There ain't but one one named Jesus can bring you out of that storm. He's the only one that can bring you out of the storm. Can I tell you something today? That woman went out and called in history. But she got on that boat and listened to me real close. The engineer made a statement. He said, Jesus came in. Uh, I'll let that boat go down under. He said, now, Jesus, God came to. But you know one thing? God wasn't on the ship. They didn't want him on there. The engineer came on. I'm going to tell you something. I want God in my life. Every second, every minute, every hour of the day. Whatever I want him. You know one thing? We go through storms in our life and trouble the trial. And I don't know how in the world we make it if we didn't have God on our side. Come on, come on. Said, Bear with me today. Listen to me real closely. There's a man, apostolic guy, brother and sister Guffley. I went to a church one night, to a big apostolic church in Memphis. I want the pastor, great man, good friend of mine. Don't be the Lord. You listen to me. There's a man. It will get out through there. Let me help again. I went in there that night in the church. And all of a sudden, this guy, he began, they was praying for him. Said he's got something bad wrong with his eye. And this man, they all prayed for him. He went sideways. Can you do that? Go sideways. Bash again. Uh huh. Go all the way around the church. That's what this guy did. Everybody was praying for him. And a few weeks later, they kept on praying and praying. Then they told him, said, man, we think you got cancer in your eye. So they got him, took a biopsy of him, and sent it off through the words of sea. And listen to me. I seen this man. I shook hands with this man in that church. It's like this. Shook hands with him in that church. This man... His wife was probably in her 50s. Thank you, Jerry. Kids, grandkids. But you ever been in a situation that you don't know what to do? He got to worry so much. I seen the man. I shook hands, spoke to him. Listen to me. He told his wife, he said, I want you on the Monday to fix up a big dinner for all the kids and grandkids and have them over for Monday night. She went out there and fixed a big dinner. A couple weeks away for the results coming. He got out in the floor, began to play with his uh, kids and uh, with his grandkids. You know what I'm talking about, because you got grandkids too. And I have too. They began, man, they just had a hallelujah time to find food, everything they had, Holy Ghost, baptized, Jesus' name, man. But the storm got so bad, so bad. I'm talking to someone in this building tonight, this morning. It got so bad, he got out there and he started playing with his kids. 
He got to going on with this rascal with him, had a big dinner, the finest food you could have. He said, okay, I'll be back in a little bit. He went out across there in the back, went out there in the woods where his little place was. And all of a sudden, the kids and the grandkids, his wife and all the kids, and then they heard a loud bomb. They went out there in the woods. This apostolic man committed suicide, blew his brains out because it got so bad. You ever been there? Before I got the Holy Ghost, I got there. Before I got baptized, Jesus, said, I got there. But you know one thing about it? And two weeks later, the results come back and was negative. He didn't have cancer. He could have just waited two more weeks. Just two more weeks. He would have got the results would have been there. Do you know one thing? I read something in the paper a while back. Now listen to me, real. Ride out your storm. Trust Jesus today and hold on. But you know one thing I found? It was an elderly man at about 65, 70 years old, and they got him in something in, in, and had him in a courtroom, and man, they just grilled him and barbecued him. You know how this how this works. And they went on and on and on about the about he this. And they went to the uh, to the jury, and the guy was way up in age. He got in his car and drove down the road and blew his brains out. Then they come back and said, not guilty. Run out your storm today. What I'm saying to you today, this is not me, me the best sermon I've ever preached in my life, but that's what God told me to preach. There is a storm that's in somebody's life in this building today. And there's a storm that you're going through. You right, It's like the lady in the barrel. What are you going to do about it? You're going to turn it over to God or you're going to let the devil get a hold of it? Let me tell you one thing about this situation today. Sister, I, I told this morning this church, Sister Grady, come help me out for a minute. There's a lady that Sister Grady was raised with, went to church with. Uh, her husband was a preacher. Her husband is the one that dedicated our daughter to the Lord, a pastor church. But you know one thing? Beautiful hall, uh, great money, two kids, everything going. Sister Grady played with her, but with Coach Free and Ben, Sister Grady, her and her husband, and all of a sudden, he didn't even know anything was even going on. And he went to take his mom and dad to the doctor. His dad was the pastor of Apostolic Church. He turned around and she called him on the phone. And she told him, she said, I'm fixing the end every bit of this. I said, what are you talking about? Then he heard a shot. Went out there in the backyard, put a spread down in the yard, and took that gun shot herself through the heart. We went to this wake service and this funeral for this situation. And you know one thing, her dad walked up to me, we friends for years, 40 years or longer. He walked up to me in the middle of the night and he, uh, he told me, he said, man, said in the middle of the night, I wake up knowing where she went. Right out your storm. You know, it's sad, but you don't ever know really what people are going through in their mind. Their mind will play games on you. It's playing games on my daughter right now. Ain't that right? It's playing, now my daughter needs prayer because she's going through that. Same thing right now, Brother Kevin. The things about, let me tell you something. When you get out away from God, even if you're in God, the devil will torment your mind. He'll put all kinds of stuff in your mind. I'm going to tell you something about this today. Ride out your storm. Amen. Ride out your storm today. You know one thing? That girl I told you about the other day, Matter of fact, uh, the guy that she's with, he's made on her. She had to go to the hospital. They're not married. By the boy, four or five years old. She went to the hospital several times. Her mom and dad said, Brother Grady, and I, I prayed and I called her. She come up and got the Holy Ghost come out there. Let me tell you something about this. Our only hope today is Jesus Christ. He, he can reach down that barrel. He can take care of you in that barrel and take care of you and get you out. And all of a sudden, he won't even know if it's a boat. Even in there, he thinks it's crazy. All of a sudden, there's on the boat, even in the area. But all of a sudden, she got out of there and she got to pray and said, God, I need you. Yeah. I need you, God. I'm here to tell you one thing about this. You know what? I told this before in this church, and we'll tell you today. This is going to be real close. August 10th, 1984. I was the manager of a bar store. I'm, I'm sorry, I told you here before. But you know one thing? I was pastor of the church with the Sister Belfry. There's two guys coming there and me. They got me down on my hands and my knees, just like this. They put the barrel of that gun to the back of my head. 
Now, you know, I was all, I'm a preacher and I was a pastor. But if I hadn't been in church, Brother Jeremy, do you think them guys I could have said, hey, I want y'all to wait till I go get my pastor and let him baptize me in Jesus' name. Let me go get the Holy Ghost, then I'll come back. No, they're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying to you today? You know what word I said? I had one word. I said, Jesus. And he turned around and he, he told the guy, I said, I can't do it. They run out the door. Let me tell you something about this today. It pays to have God on our side of that. If we're in a wreck, we in whatever going on, our kids going, and my Lord, I'm going to tell you, mine's going through it right now. She needs y'all. Wait till right out your storm. But let me tell you a little something about, about a little boat. I'd hate to be in the ocean and be right in a boat the sound of a canoe. And all that wind come up through there just like this. Twisting and turning, sister. Just turn it all the way out like this. Turn it all the way around. And you look, there ain't nothing but water. And all you got is sharks. You got alligators. You got whales. And all of a sudden you're sitting here in the middle of this. And you say, what am I going to do? I can tell you what you can do. Whatever storm it is, God can bring you out of it. He right. can bring you out of it. Right. right out your storm today. What are you saying today? I'm here to tell you right now. That's the same sermon I preached this past Wednesday night. And three of us the Holy Ghost. Preaching now was down with five was the Holy Ghost. Preaching that new church a few weeks ago. People come. What are you talking about, Brother Ray? That is my job. I mean, everybody in the world I can to God. But everywhere I'm at, I'm winning somebody to God. I'm going to close in short. Listen to me. I may have told this. I had two denominal men. I'm careful about how I say that. And, and I called them. I said, one of them cut my grass. The bush hog was about seven o'clock before I sold it. He brought out there. And I said, Philip, I'm going to be preaching this out to the church down there. He should come, so he come. Well, says the he just walked through the door. He said, man, I like this. Next time I preach, he come back. I had uh, another time he come, and all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost hit everybody. He was in the altar, and the other one was in the altar, six more. The next thing you know, I looked up, everybody was running out of church, shout. They out there running and shouting into it, just to get in the Holy God. Now, you know what the pastor said? He said, now that one, Philip, he comes quite a bit to the church. You know what, I'm going to tell you something. He is our help today. God is our help today. In a time of refuge in our life. You need me to tell you one thing about Brother J. Frank Wilson. He told me a lot of things. He said, God can give you rest for your soul and your mind today. He's the only one who can give you the rest. He said, go back and get me all turned up. He said, all you got to do is just lay it on God. And let God bring you all the way through. You want, we've all been through some troubles. Sister Monica, come here, Miss Monica. I'm so glad she's here in this church today. I, can I say this, Brother Sister Seymour? I told her, what, about a year or two ago? I said, uh, this Sister Ray, you want to go see Martha? And I, and I said, we're going to go. We went up right to her and talked to her about 15 minutes. And she said, I'll be there tonight. She got through that door that night, and everybody in this church started crying. You remember that night? Uh huh. I was up here a while back, and I had her to sing a song. And the Holy Ghost hit her. She shouted all over front of this church, just like she did over at that church over there. I'm ready to tell her, now she's back, and she's going to stay in here, and God's going to bless her, and he's going to bring her husband in here. That's right. Hear me? Yeah, the story was keep going, but everybody pray for him. He's going to get in church. You know what I'm telling you? Something? i got to preach for a little bit longer. Oh, Sister Rhodes. You tell me, Sister Lady text you yesterday. Tell her I got something I need her to do. I want her to get a hold of every one of y'all's kids. Say, okay, we need to go over there and be in church with mom and dad at least once a month. At least once a month. We need to get them over there. Okay, if you have to buy them a steak, if you have to get them a shotgun and point at them, or a BB gun, or just get them to church. Say, we need to go over there and just walk in and surprise mom and dad in church. And look all the way around. You know one thing? Thank you, Martha. You know one thing? I've seen people be a proprietor and praying, and the one day be praying for in Brother Wilson's church, the guy will come in there running and walk all the way to the altar, and the man goes, That's my son I've been praying for tonight. That's my daughter I've been praying. I'm going to tell you what, I wish the Lord prayed for Amy tonight. Come on. Martha, you pray for my daughter. 
You can take something like this. Light out your storm. Hey, God ain't going nowhere. We may go somewhere. But he ain't going to walk away. You might or I might. I'm not going to walk away and you're not either. Because God's going to always be there. He'll never forsake you. He'll never walk away from you. We may think sometimes he don't hear us, but he does. He hears us all the time. What he said that right out in the storm. Don't you listen to this. And the same as musicians are coming. I want you to imagine yourself in a little boat. You're in the middle of the ocean. And you can't swim. I don't think you swim out of the ocean anyway. All of a sudden, that wind gets so high. You're there by yourself. It could be about a family member. It could be about a loved one. It could be about a job problems you got. It could be anything in the world. The landlord. It could be anything in the world going on. But all of a sudden, you know what my father-in-law taught me, Brother Guthrie? He said he was a, he didn't have that education. He's working at a steel plant. He said there was a guy who took over boss and said, he told me, he said, I want to run all you guys away from here. My father-in-law was an apostolic preacher. Couldn't even read, couldn't even write. You remember that guy? He couldn't even read or write. He said, we're going to see about this, buddy boy. You know what he did? He didn't go up there and whip it. He didn't get a gun. He went up there and got on his knees. He began to pray. And about two weeks later, that guy was fired. I'm here to tell you something about this today. The storm may get rough. It may get hard. It may get times. But we may go through troubles and trials and problems. But I know one that can say, stop that uh, sea or the waves or whatever problem it is right. in your life. That's right. He can take care of anything in the world. Let me tell you a little something about this today. I've had all kinds of sickness the last few years. I've lost 50 pounds. I've opened heart surgery, heart attack, dog bite attack now, going back, doing a lot better now. But a lot of folks said, man, if you're that sick, why don't you just stay at home and quit preaching? I said, no, sir. I'm not going to do it. No. If I die in the pulpit, that's all right with me. If I die, if I die praying so through the Holy Ghost, well, God, that's all right with me. You know one thing about it, I seen Brother J. Frank Wilson had a stroke. He got back down the pulpit and preached. Out of Bethlehem Church, he sure did. You know, I told somebody, and I just say this plain. I went to church and I had to take pain medicine. That's how bad it was. That's how bad it was. But uh, some people say, I wouldn't do that. Well, I'm gonna do it. I can baptize somebody in Jesus' name. God takes me home. That's okay. But you know one thing? He's took good care of me so far. Do you know what it meant to me this past Wednesday night? That girl, we used to be her pastor. She'd been going through everything in the world. Her dad's a pastor. A preacher, not a pastor. He's a preacher too. Call, crying. Brother Brady, please play for her. I called her. Some of them said, she ain't going to come. But you know what it does to me? When I seen her walk through that door that night, just like it did Monica today, she come over here on that Sunday night. She walked right through that door, and she come straight to me and Sister Ray and hugged us. And I was preaching the same sermon I'm preaching today, right out your store. And you know one thing? She almost literally ran to that altar. Then 15 minutes time, she prayed through the Holy Ghost. Her aunt was there. The aunt prayed through the Holy Ghost. There's another little girl, Tina, I used to pass her in her 20s. She prayed through the Holy Ghost. What he said now, right out your storm. God's on your side. He can help you. Mom, he's on your side. He brought you. He's going to carry you for Let me tell you something about this storm today. There's times that we all go through problems. It gets so hard at times. It would get hard even make it. I lay in them hospitals. I'm going to tell you something. Christina, you're going to like this one. I was at the heart doctor. Told her, the heart doctor, I said, next time I'll preach, I want you to come be up here in the, in the uh, church to hear me preach. 
See, the other thing, he's me and Sister Grady, his doctor. He's also the uh, Roman Love is pastor of the church God. He's his doctor. And there's a lady in that very church named like Sister Sandra Shard up here to, uh, to work on. Would you go take all of your people, every one of them, and go to church? Well, he said, yeah. Everybody in both shops just go, what's one soul worth today? What's one soul worth today? I thought people stayed dinners to just get them to church. Then they get in there, and all of a sudden they'd be sitting there in the Holy Ghost with him. They stand up and I, I, man, I'm telling you something. Right out your storm. Because victory is on the other side. That lady, that missionary, what millions of dollars. All of a sudden she went back home. She changed partners. Forget a missionary. I will not for her. What are you talking about today? Right out your storm. And Jesus is the help today to fight you through. Give right. you a job problem, right. whatever it may be. Listen to me, I'm going to read it again. Read it again. Right out your storm. Jesus, our help for today. And our hope for tomorrow. I got to have it, folks. That's right. The worst storm I'm going through right now about my daughter and my grandson wanting to be baptized right now in Jesus' name. And my son law That's the storm I'm praying for. Somebody else pray for mine just like I pray for theirs. Shall we all stand today? I'm going to tell you something about this storm. It don't just have to be. It could be anything in the world that bothers you. It's got, got you all. You don't know where, what to do. You don't know what car to buy. You don't know what house to buy. You don't know really what to do. Have you ever been in some situations that you don't know which way to turn, right or left? You ever thought about praying about it? Did you know Brother J. Frank Wilson had a tree behind his house? It come up about four feet and went over like that and lightning the struggle. He's going to act that prayer tree at that log and pray. We all need to have a place to go pray. What are you saying today, brother? Light out your storm because he is on the other side of it. He's guiding your car, your boat, your job, your money, whatever, your sickness. He's right there with you now. Oh, brother, come help me out a minute. Come here, come help me out. God did not give you y'all's kids for them to go to hell. God gave you the kids to get them to church. I don't care what it takes. Dr. Denise, we're going to put her in charge of getting them all there at least once a month. You hear me? Uh, we're going to pray with you. Sister, we're going to straight up pray for her and about that boy. Yes, sir. What are you talking about? We're going to be praying about your husband and your mother-in-law. Huh? Well, Sister Governor, whatever trial you may face, yes. say, God, go help me. He's going to help me. Walk around here with me a minute. Yes. Walk around here. Yes. This, this great man of God right here. A storm. I've seen a lot of people go through a storm and just say, I'm going to give it up. I've seen them walk away from church say, I can't go. I'm going to tell you what, you can't go without him, baby. You're going to have him tonight, folks. You're going to have him tonight. Oh, if you're walking out of a storm, you're going to you got to have him tonight. Call him for his name tonight. Sing it for me, please. Sing it for me. Yes. Sing it for me, brother. Sing it for me, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Why don't you just get out and walk about the house and pray and say, God, you know what I need. You know what kind of trial I'm going through? What kind of trouble I'm going through? Yes, God. Yes, Lord.
you thankful for what the Lord has done? I asked Brother Seymour. He, he's looking for me a pair of scissors. I, I, I feel like, well, we just need to obey the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, now, I pulled this out, and I don't know if it's been, it's, it's been washed. I want, I want to cut that uh, handkerchief back in half. It, it's, it's clean, but you know what? Pride said, oh, you will not pull that out. It's stained. I said, you know what? I don't care. I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I, I felt led to do this. I, I, want, I want to anoint. I want to anoint. Each one of these, yes. And we're, we're going as a church. We're going to pray over these. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, sir. Pass away, Lord. Half of this is going to go to brother and sister Grady. Yes, 